The House of Commons has rejected the Maybot's Brexit special by a spectacular margin. Various factions are now keen to push their alternatives. But deeply unpopular as the Maybot's deal has proved, it's not clear there are any more votes for the Norway option, a harder deal, a softer deal, or kicking the can down the road by extending the Brexit negotiating process. Those who want a second referendum think this parliamentary stalemate is their best chance of getting one. And the idea has been gaining traction. But like every other cunning plan to escape the Maybot's deal, it lacks a Commons majority too. Yes, Parliament has become a monument to rigor mortis. But some are still plugging away. Here's Tory MP Heidi Allen with her take of the week. Let's face it. Brexit is a dog's breakfast. The Prime Minister cooked up a deal before Christmas in a heroic attempt to find compromise. But in a divided country and a divided parliament, it failed. I voted against it because I thought it would risk our economy and weaken the prospect for jobs. Others voted against it because they just want to come out of Europe with no deal at all. Trying to serve sushi to some and sausages to other was always going to be difficult. But it's about time the Prime Minister recognised that the right-wingers in my party have an insatiable appetite and they will never be satisfied. So let's digest the last few weeks. So we've got a government with a deal that can't be passed, a clock that's ticking, and an opposition leader, let's face it, incapable of cooking up anything better. Many of us once thought Norway Plus could be a solution. But like everyone else in the last year, we've all learned a lot more about Brexit. And we realise, of course, now that it would make us rule takers, not rule makers. So it's time to stop the clock and go back to the people. Just because a slightly dodgy Donny kebab a couple of years ago seemed a good idea, doesn't mean it should be the only thing on the menu now. Let's have a real choice. It's time for Parliament to give people the right to vote. Let them have the final say on their future. We're grateful to the Queen's Head Cafe in South London and grateful to Heidi for joining us now. Welcome. So, a second referendum, what would the question be? Well, I think the, the view on that has shifted probably even in the last week since the, the Prime Minister's deal was defeated um, so badly. Had you asked me the question before that, I think I probably would have said her deal in the form that it was, um, with um, probably a hard leave, because a lot of voters would still want that mm. and remain and perhaps some kind of triple preference Oh, multiple vote. choice. Well, a bit like a mayoral election, preference votes. Yeah. Because it's difficult and it's um, inelegant, um, but for people, you know, if we reach this point, of mm. course, for people to feel perhaps sure. that there's something that they want, then I don't think you can rule too what much out. Would you, so you said that's what it might have been. What yeah. would it be now? Um, I think um, we need to let Parliament wrangle with this now over the next couple of weeks. The 29th <laughs> of um, this month is when we will have the debate and the amendments and the votes. I think we need to see what comes out of that. I don't see now, honestly, how the Prime Minister's deal could be on the ballot paper, given the, the huge defeat that it's... You don't think she's going to be able to put it together with these talks reaching out beyond the, the Tories? You don't think that's going to happen? I, I don't... Not to resurrect that deal. You know, mm. had there been 50 votes in it, perhaps you could tweak it, but I think yeah, it's too far Yeah, that might. Away. She could be, but she's got 230. Yeah, it's too yeah. far a, a bridge to gap. So, Michael, parliamentary stalemate. We know what Parliament doesn't like. There's probably not majority uh, for alternatives. Why not throw it back to the people? But throw what back to the people? We haven't been able to establish what the choice is. We know that people who have always been Remain and who lost the referendum uh, want to have another go. Sometimes people say it's the best of three because what they really want is that as soon as they get a referendum that turns out their way, that'll be the end of it. There'll be no talk about further referendums after that. So th they want to have another referendum now presumably because the, the choice is between uh, staying in the European Union 
or utter chaos around no agreement on anything else? Well, that's hardly a fair question. Uh, I mean, I could just about see how you could argue that once Parliament has reached a position, you could offer that as a choice to remain in the European Union, although it would still be completely unfair because people were told um, at the referendum that their choice would be absolutely final. By the way, this is for me Groundhog Day. Uh, every, every time I come on the show, there's someone sitting on that sofa talking about the need for another referendum. And although you say, and the BBC always says, that this is an option gaining traction, what was actually demonstrated this week is that there's a very small minority of Labour MPs who are in favour of it, and the minority in the Conservative mm. Party is even smaller than that. But there are more Labour MPs than before, it's and fair. the opinion polls show it's more popular idea. It's still a minority taste, I, I accept it, that. It, but there is some... I think that's the definition of traction. I'm it, not it's, saying... It's, 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 you know, it's, a, it's a minority... Ago, that, you didn't dare talk about it, but that right. really is... That it, it's a mi now. minority which, in my view, doesn't justify someone appearing most weeks on that sofa. To anyway, I'm, I'm grateful <laughs> that you, you have realised that I set policy for the BBC. Uh, Alan, what do you view on this? Well, for me, it's Groundhog Day, because every time I come on this programme, Michael says it's Groundhog Day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not... I think I'm maybe not, you need to get out more. I don't boom, know. boom. I'm not in favour of a second referendum, and I'm not in favour of... Of no deal. The thing that will, will necessary for both those camps is a deal. Obviously for the no deal people, uh, if they don't want no deal, they need a deal. But for the referendum people, it would be outrageous if you had a referendum and put to them a deal that had been overwhelmingly defeated in yeah. Parliament by that unusual. huge majority. Yeah. I think you've so accepted you can't do that now. Yeah, she I, can't I don't do think that. we so can. I think the Prime Minister might deal. try. Oh, but... just one second. She mm. needs another deal. And that deal, if approved by Parliament, if you're going to have a second referendum, is there to say, this is as far as we've got. I mean, I wouldn't do it, but you certainly need that if you support a second referendum. But, but if, a deal is, if a deal is approved by Parliament... Then it will the, happen. The British people already having voted in a referendum to leave. I cannot see any justification for having another referendum. Let me ask you this on the practicalities of it. Uh, Theresa May is against it. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn's not exactly keen. So I don't understand how it happens. Well, two ways. Both of them are, I think it's fair to say, are um, getting there. You know, the fact today that in the, in the various meetings that Cabinet Ministers have been having with all sorts of colleagues and MPs, the fact that they've been putting on the table, well, have you seen how long it would take? You know, there's mm. a document now. It's I wrong. understand they produced a document that said it could take up to a year to Which, which is wrong. It seems a long while. Yeah, if, if I mean, you, it can happen overnight, though. If you look at the UCL, who did a... a university College That's London. right, who did a... My university, excellent, obviously. Very well. Um, did, um, indeed. <laughs> did a report into World that. World class. That, um, that I, was, I mean, to be fair, they were, they were banking on us having had the meaningful vote in December when it should have been. Mm. They said we could have done it by May. So we're out by a couple of months, right. but it is perfectly doable. But I still don't see... You know, there's only a handful of Tory MPs have come out for it. Only 70 Labour ones have, uh, have come out for, for it. You do need primary legislation. Mm -hmm. Government would have to take it on board. Which Dominic Grieve tabled a couple of days ago. Right, but as you know, backbenchers uh, on their own, even in this current resurgence of parliamentary power, it's quite hard to get. But here's a pol political uh, issue. Would it not split the Tory party asunder? I, I mean, there are risks for, for both main parties, but actually, it could this, do Labour to be fair. Too. Yeah. Um, I think... And you're right, you know, the numbers are low, but what there are an awful lot of are quiet conversations in corridors of, to colleagues like me, Heidi, well, you know, I think we've got to be seen to be going around the block one more time. Let's give Norway a punt, see if we can do that, but eventually I'll get there. So the, the numbers are far greater. Um, you know, polling out today, I think all bar about 27 of Tory-held seats across the country are now shifted to remain. Big polling that's been done, that's been published today. So the numbers are growing. Um, but I think... Oh, so calling for a second referendum and remain are the same thing, which I thought they were. No, not at all. Well, you've, no, you've just admitted it. No, no, not at all. What it's saying is that people have a view. They want to express a view. No, you just said they, they wanted to remain. No, what, no, but it's showing that they, the, the mood is shifting and therefore it's not a completely ridiculous offer. You know, the public are as unsettled with this as, as Parliament is. And just to address the point you made a little earlier about, you know, best of three or whatever it might be, and the conversations that we've been having, a big, big bunch of cross-party MPs who've been looking at this for months now and working together, not always about people's vote, but to try and find a solution, recognising that neither of the leaders were doing that. Um, we actually decided that should this happen, it needs, and not as it was last time, being an advisory referendum, it would need to be legislatively binding, so that it cannot be 
the best of three. So if it so, goes against... So because goes you think against, you might win this one, no, this one's going to be binding, whereas the last one which you not, lost is either not way. regarded as unbinding. Our view, if, if Leave were to win again by one vote, that's the end of it, but it's informed consent. People would know the options to in front of them. And if you were to win by 51 to 49, a point I put to Mr Blair earlier today, you really think that would bring closure to the issue? I think, you know, it's going to be a hot topic for probably our lifetimes. But the point he, is... He would demand a third referendum if it was only 51 to 49. Well, you know, you, you can't bind the hands of government. You can't say what a future um, manifesto of any party might look like. But the point is, and none of us want... I don't want... I don't wake up in the morning wanting a second referendum. But I see colleagues but, around me... I but see you our, haven't been able... Apart from the possibility that people would vote to remain, you haven't at all been able to explain what is the other thing that they're being given the option of voting for. <clears throat> and it seems to me that this is a self-fulfilling prophecy. I mean, if there is nothing to offer them, then it's not a fair vote. You can't say, well, it's either remain or complete chaos. If, on the other hand, Parliament comes to a conclusion, then I see no reason why you should have a second referendum. No, and I completely agree with you, but I think the point is it feels <clears throat> like we're going round and round in circles, and I'm not sure we will find that Alan, conclusion. I, I was saying to Heidi earlier, you know, I very much respect Heidi, and I was surprised that she voted against the deal. I surprised people like Mark Harper. There was a list of names there. Now, obviously, they did that because they want a second referendum. I, in my humble opinion you're going to lose a second referendum mm. by a bigger margin than the first one. Mm. I mean, not only was take back the control devastating, those three words, mm. with people who wanted to remain having to explain a quite a complex thing about customs unions and trade and not the rest of it. not quite so sexy, is if it? If you add to take back control to, we already told them once, mm. I mean, I tell you, you'll tell have a Tell them lot again, of, louder. You'll have a lot of Remainers who will be voting to leave. So I really can't get this. And a lot of very good friends of mine are taking this view. Whereas, for my view, it solves nothing. You're still going to have to have... As I say, you have to have a deal anyway, because there has to be something there as an alternative, surely. But, and and all, all of these arguments are right. <laughs> but the inelegant, practical truth of the matter is, if Parliament, if we can't get our act together, which is looking more and more likely, and I'm afraid our Prime Minister has wasted a lot of time mm. by trying to compromise with people yeah. who are not in the mood to compromising, delaying it from December. Yeah, there was no remain, need to you're do gonna that. vote down everything else. So should you get, no, should, no, should, should, you get um, a second referendum? No, that, that's wrong. Should that's should, wrong. Should, some, some of us might, I wouldn't. Yeah. Should Mrs May resign and let somebody else have a go? No, because I think we're at such a, a critical point now. There is nobody with better relationships with EU leaders than her, I think, to put in a new person at this stage would really? be. Yeah. I think she has a good relationship with Mr Macron and Angela Merkel. Well, it's good, developed, whatever you, word you want to use to describe it. Putting in a brand new person, I don't, you know, starting but that, relationships But that are relationship fresh isn't, at the moment, the important one. The important relationship at the moment is anyone who might be able to cobble together a deal. Mm -hmm. And the deal that you might cobble together might be very, very different from the Prime Minister's oh, deal. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm dismayed to find the Prime Minister in any way clinging to a deal that was defeated by 230. I mean, this to me is absolute cloud yeah. cuckoo land. So you need someone, I'm afraid, who has none of that baggage, who's just able to say, well, I'm now willing to look at anything on which the House of Commons could agree. I'm simply going to be an honest broker and try and find that. And that clearly isn't Mrs May. Well, we All need right. to see, to be fair, how she responds in the next few days. We are seeing. Well, we we are will seeing. move on to the next stage. We need to move on to the next item. Heidi, thank you for thank being you. with us.